Agora TV. The world is thinking. Well, I'm job hunting in the sense of watching television when I come across a Doctors Without Borders neurosurgeon. This man, he's parachuting into a war zone. He's got nothing to protect him except a walkie-talkie. Well, when I changed channels, I saw Tom Cruise and someone I recognise as his publicist, who's also on a walkie-talkie, as Tom Cruise gets into his limo. Now, I have a question. What does a publicist need a walkie-talkie for? It is a tiny actor getting into a car. <laughs> I had an epiphany, and the epiphany is this. There's two kinds of people in the world. Useful people and useless people. And this means I've worked my entire adult life to be absolutely useless. Not like that Doctors Without Borders guy, no. I bet that Doctors Without Borders neurosurgeon could fuck any refugee he likes. <laughs> so at this moment, I decided to defect from Hollywood and become a useful person. Yes, I sent my CV straight to Doctors Without Borders. That is French. Doctors Without Borders. <laughs> are not currently recruiting celebrity journalists. I'm hurt, but I notice they're also not currently recruiting aromatherapists. <laughs> what international incident led to this ruling? <laughs> 20 CVs, 20 charities, nobody wants me. Why? Because I'm useless. Until my sister calls. Kate. Kate was features editor of In Style magazine on purpose. <laughs> Kate says, Jane. I've got a job for you, you're gonna love it. Rachel Weiss has just made The Constant Gardener. Now it's a film about the drug companies exploiting the slums in Kenya. We want you to ask Rachel, who's her favorite designer? <laughs> I tell my sister, no. And later, yes, for money. <laughs> but gave me an idea, because if all I can do is write about stuff, why don't I write about cool stuff? Now I know what I'm gonna be. A foreign correspondent. I'm perfect for this job. I already have a DKNY safari dress. K80. She's my role model. Look at her. BBC chief news correspondent. Look at that. Yeah. <laughs> K80. She covered Bosnia, Albania, Tiananmen Square. I could do all of that when I find out where those places are. All I need is a massive story, so I go straight to Google. <laughs> I Google most evil man in the world. Yeah. And I get this guy. Now, he may look like Dave Chappelle as Rick James. <laughs> but he isn't. He's Joseph Coney, 46, leader of the Ugandan guerrilla group, the Lord's Resistance Army. I read, Joseph Coney's so evil, you say anything bad about this man, he is going to cut your lips off and make you eat them. Yeah. Joseph Coney, he could do magic, read your mind, cure malaria. He talks to God. God's quite chatty. Tells him to get rid of this guy. Uganda's president, Museveni. Here he is with ex-British Foreign Secretary Jack Straw. Museveni's the black guy. <laughs> Notice. Oh, that's brilliant. Look at this. This is my favorite. Look at this. Microsoft does not recognize the name of this major African leader, so it underlines it in red. Look at that. Wrong. <laughs> do, you know do you know what Microsoft wants me to call him? Yoda. The 70, poor bastard. His country's got poverty, he's got AIDS, now he's got Joseph Coney too. Luckily, he gets huge financial support from Britain and America. Financial support, presumably not for not being Robert Mugabe. But one thing baffles me about this story. How does an obvious raving loon like Joseph Coney get his own army? I read, because Joseph Coney kidnaps kids. Joseph Coney has kidnapped between 20 and 66,000 children. And in two decades, more than that, nobody stopped him. This is an incredible story.